I was interested in, in Michael Glatz's story because uh, a, a lot of my work deals with um, identity and in particular characters who you know um, want to be someone else or be perceived as someone else and the kind of extremes that they're willing to go through in order to you know change mm -hmm. and Michael's story is the kind of like most extreme example of that to go from uh, you know being a very out proud happy gay activist to the exact kind of person that he had been fighting against for the past 15 years I mean he was specifically very like anti Christian because he saw Christian parents and pastors and families you know disowning their gay children and just you know thought it was awful and he really did you know become one of them and you know I, I know a lot of like uh, gay people but gay people in particular kind of like question why we'd want to give Michael a voice or tell his story but I really just found I just felt like it was a really great challenge to try and like instead of you know vilifying him or judging him or hating him to actually take the time and try to figure out you know what happened Benoit, um, we optioned Benoit's article and also Michael's life rights and uh, you know so Benoit was just always available for questions or um, uh, you know any sort of information we needed and then I also did send him each draft or you know or every few drafts of the script right. to kind of get his feedback because you know he obviously knows Michael really well knew that world so um, I really was you know appreciative of his uh, story feedback. The real Michael Glatz didn't have any involvement in the film. He, uh, you know, sold his rights, meaning he had kind of no say in the script or production or editing, and he, he knew that. Uh, and, you know, he was always available for questions, and, and, and I, I did, I flew to Wyoming to visit him, meet him, interview him about two and a half years ago. So, um, you know, we like built like a, a, a friendly relationship, right. and I was always able to call him and ask him questions, and he was always uh, down to answer. James Franco actually uh, himself optioned the the article and the life rights. So the you know the, the initial idea for the film came from our executive producer Gus Van Sant, uh, and then James optioned everything, and, and I came in later. So um, James was always attached to play Michael, but uh, he was always open to you know someone else if if he wasn't the right fit. But um, after you know meeting and interviewing the real Michael, I just saw like something, some odd similarities that I where I knew. James would bring more to the character than you know I ever could have written or imagined, which I think happened. Uh, and um, yeah, I think he, he was just perfect for the part. And then of course it's like like an added bonus that he does always, or not always, but has played so many queer characters, and there's so much kind of discussion around those decisions. And it was kind of a cool little I don't know what you'd call it, but just cool little thing for him to play uh, an, an anti-gay <laughs> or, or a gay man who becomes an anti-gay pastor. Okay. <laughs> And, uh, I'm guessing, you know. So Gus, Gus read the New York Times article and, and had the initial thought that it could make a cool film. And um, uh, I just kind of went off and researched and interviewed people for you know, two and a half years about before we started shooting. Um, and so Gus was there to kind of, you know, read an occasional draft, give notes, uh, and then he watched the final, the the, the cut of the film that I was, you know, felt like the most proud showing, but where there was still time to give notes. Mm -hmm. So he watched that and gave notes and was just, you know, very supportive. He and James both, I think, are, are very supportive of, like, new, newer, younger artists. I think Quinto was, was super important to the, to the film because that character is sort of like the anchor in their relationship. Um, Michael's kind of always searching and wandering and, and trying to figure out what to do and Bennett was always pretty like secure in his choices with, with his job and financial security and um, just like needed someone who could like play opposite James in a way to where you know the Michael character could be a bit more playful at times lost at other times but where Bennett would always be kind of grounded and Quinto just Quinto just has that like just that confidence um, I mean, he's a phenomenal actor, so that's all that should matter. But he, he does just exude this, this, uh, you know, this immense kind of like confidence that I think really brought a lot to the role. And in addition, he's very dedicated. So we would sit down and write and rewrite scenes. Um, wow. He would, he would, you know, make a lot of suggestions uh, of things that he felt like weren't working. But I'm never insulted by that. I love collaborating with everyone. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm eternally grateful that he 
participated in this film. The message of the film, I, I see it as it's something that I feel like should, you know, start a conversation about the power of religion and belief, um, the desire to belong or to feel a part of a, of a group, what it means to identify as anything, whether it's gay, straight, Christian, you know, just just the kind of like these labels that we either impose on ourselves or allow others to impose upon us, and how they can kind of like, you know, box you in and pr prevent you from doing things that maybe would make you happy. And it's a, it's been like a very conf complicated thing because for you know there might be some people who feel like um, well then are you saying that gay people can become straight but that's really not at all what the film is about um, the film in fact I feel like is so much less so about sexuality it's more about uh, you know everything else that I just mentioned about identity perception belief mm -hmm. um, belonging and it's really like I, I had to kind of come to this place uh, in order to successfully kind of tell a story like this in a non-judgmental way mm. um, and for me that was kind of like seeing Michael where he is now with his now wife seeing how happy they are and feeling like you know who am I to say that he's wrong or lying to himself in the same way that I don't want him to tell me that I'm you know living a sinful life so Absolutely. which he used to do but he no longer does